Hey everyone, what I'm working on now. Well, I got a Buick Verano here, 2013, with no AC. Let me show you something real quick, because I got to shut this thing off. See the lit up light bulb? That's the compressor clutch connector. I have no compressor clutch. Guess what? Compressor clutch is not available by itself. Got to put a compressor on it. So the reason I didn't want to leave this thing running was because I don't want to get it hot to take the compressor off. So I got to drain down the system and everything else now. Anyway, the system's full. I checked it. The pressure seemed good. I actually recovered it just to make sure. And sure enough, it was fine. So the reason for the test light here, or for the light bulb, is I wanted to check the circuitry itself. And if you look, I'm actually not going in to where the connector, connection, connector, connector actually goes in. I was actually at the top edge there going to the outside. That's kind of like the spot where you would use to pull a pin out if you had to. So there's the compressor itself. So it's getting power, it's getting ground. It's enough to light this bulb. So that tells you it can handle amperage. Compressor, the clutch isn't doing anything. Never turns on. So we're gonna be putting a compressor in. I had to get one right from GM. Uh, like I said, you could not get a clutch. I would have rather just done a clutch at this point, but since it's not available, what are you gonna do? So let me drag the system down, recover it, and then we're gonna go ahead and replace that. All right, so system's recovered. I just put it into a vacuum. I'm gonna show all this down, disconnect it. We're gonna put it up in the air, and then we're gonna pull the compressor off. In case you're wondering what I'm doing right at the moment, I'm just taking, taking the gauges and everything else off of this thing. So I can put it up in the air. I always like to put them into a little bit of a vacuum because a lot of times on an AC system, you'll get a captured spot of refrigerant. All of a sudden you pull off a line, you swear that thing's completely empty, and all of a sudden you get a, poof, a Freon coming out of it. So I always like to put it into a vacuum and then fight with the vacuum a little bit. I'd rather have that than get shot in the face with, with the actual Freon itself that can blind you. So something to be mindful of. All right, so this compressor really isn't too bad from what I can tell. You got a connector here. Sometimes these safety locks, these things, sometimes they can be a real pain in the neck to get to release. But I gotta release that, take that sensor plug off. Then you got the manifold connection here for the two pipes. And then we gotta undo the tensioner, take some tension off of this. It's nice and slack, and then it should be just three bolts. Then the whole thing should come out. What I should probably do first is verify I have the right compressor before I pull the whole thing apart. Done that before, taking something all the way apart, and it was wrong. Got it from a dealer, so went off the VIN number, so you would assume it's going to be right, but you never know. They make mistakes, too. So the new compressor seems right. It looks right. Connections are in the same place. Everything looks good. One thing you want to make sure when you're replacing the compressor, follow the directions. The directions are very important here because... It comes shipped with 1.4 ounces already inside the compressor. What you have to do is record how much oil came out when you when you recovered the system. And then what you need to do too is once you take that old compressor off of the you need to drain as much as possible from it and record how much you've taken out. Because with that reading, let's say you took out two ounces. You need to put two more ounces in here. So and then whatever you took out of the system needs to go back into the system. So this way you don't want to over oil it. You over oil it, you can cause damage to a new compressor. So let's go get that other compressor off of there. Now we are going to start with pulling the belt off. So I have a belt tool on here. And really all I'm going to do is move it and just jam it in between or stick it in between the crank bolt. This way I can just pop the belt off and I can leave the belt in place and not have to worry about it. There was a shield that goes underneath here that I took off yesterday. So we're going to be putting that back on when I'm done. So let's try to get... Oh, man, sometimes these things really, really are not fun to disconnect. Let me get a little tiny screwdriver there and try to pop that. I finally got it to release with just a little pocket screwdriver. So now, let's do that. Let's connect it. That should probably be, I'm going by feel. It feels like a 10 millimeter. Let's get a 10 up there, and then these should just be 13s holding it to the block. So with that bolt out, and it was actually a 13 millimeter headed bolt, just move the line up and out. As soon as I undid it and the seals broke free, you could hear it go because it basically the vacuum that was in the system sucked through. 
So now I have a 13 that's up here. Nope, that's actually open there. It's down lower than that. It's here. It's got a stud on it, I believe, from what I can feel. I can't really see it. So I gotta get that out, then that out. Leave the easiest one in to last, trust me. You'll save yourself a lot of aggravation. So that top holding bolt is actually a stud. So there's just a nut on there. That was actually for the line itself. And look at that bear. I'm already using the ratchet you gave me. You sent me. So I didn't realize it was a stud on top. But if it wasn't a stud, if it was bolts, then leave the easiest one to last. It'll save you a big aggravation. Trust me. All right. I got to do this two-handed. So now that everything's unbolted, this should work its way out. Feels like there's something holding it up top. I can't tell what though. Oh man, this maybe just caught on the lines. May have corrosion on the stud too. Okay, there it goes. Now what you want to try to avoid to doing too is tipping this end. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about. Because this end is where the lines go. If you tip that end, you might spill oil out. So now with the compressor off, I took an old antifreeze jug and I hollowed it out. So this way, I could take this and I could just stick it in here and let it drain for a while. That's all. So it'll go for a little while. It's probably not going to get too much out of it, but we're going to get something out of it. And then we'll, after it sits for, I don't know, maybe half hour or so, then we'll measure it and see what we actually have. Might not have a whole lot, that's for sure. All right, so I've actually spun this thing and everything else, and legit, all I've gotten is a little spillage. I mean, there's hardly anything. I'm going to go for a few more seconds. I mean, that's, that's legit hardly anything. Now, I'll be honest with you. I mean, how much is that really? A tablespoonful? <laughs> it's not even worth measuring, to be totally honest with you. I'm sure somebody out there is going to say, no, you shouldn't absolutely measure it. No, that, no, there's no reason to. So what I'm going to do is put a little sploosh, you know, pretend you're, you're making a pie or something like that and you're doing it off of memory. You know, you're baking something at home, just doing it off of memory, and you just add a splish of that and a splash of that and a pinch of this and a pinch of that. That's Come on. So let me uncap this. Let me put a little bit of oil in this, pag oil. Make sure you use the correct recommended oil, and then let's get this thing installed. Now, I do want to show you this. It does say that if the amount of oil, if less than 40 milliliters, 1.4 ounces, was removed in total from the compressor and when you drain the system, then you don't need to add any oil. You don't need to add any kind of oil to the compressor, just put it in as is. So just to get a reference here, that's one ounce right there in this glass measuring cup. I keep this in my toolbox for this very reason. There is no way that that's even a half an ounce of what's, you know, what's inside there. That's probably... I don't even know how much, but it's, it's not even that much. You know what? I'm going to measure it because I know somebody's going to ask me. Let me measure it, but I'm going to install it anyway, and then we can see what the final result is a little bit later on because it's going to take a little while for it to drain out of there. All right, so... We are ready to put the compressor back in place. Now, what I did was I tucked the wiring off to the side so I don't want to accidentally pinch it. Now this could be a little tricky getting on that stud and manipulating everything in place. I'm just gonna use a little finesse. There we go. Now we're still gonna replace these seals on here. Let me get those bolts. I'm actually gonna clean them up and put a little lube on the bolts before I put them in. All right, what I did do is I put a drop of oil. I did wire wheel the bolts. I put a drop of oil on the threads just to make my life a little bit easier going back together. Now, these bolts are supposedly coated from the factory, 
but I have always found that they wind up getting a buildup of stuff on them, a little bit of corrosion. Not bad. They usually come out without getting seized in place, but there again, just try to get them down as far as you can. And here, like anything else, don't just tighten one up. Go across the board. nut in place, which I think I can do through the front here. Yeah, you got to be a contortionist. All right. Uh, here's my new favorite tool that I got from Bear. Thank you. And now the nice thing about this ratchet too is, believe it or not, I actually don't have a short ratchet. I mean, I got a stubby ratchet, but I don't have like a, a normal length ratchet like this. Um, I, I have a, I have all longer ones and flex heads. I don't have anything like this. I used to, but as you saw in my short, I do wind up giving away a lot of tools over time. And I had given away several sets of sockets, ratchets, everything else. So, is there a torque spec? Yes, there's a torque spec. I don't know how much of my arm is in your way, and I apologize if it is. You don't have to go bananas tightening these, but they gotta be tight. Just, you know. Use your noggin when you're doing it, that's all. All right, so those are tight, I'm happy with that. And now let's get on to changing those seals. I don't know how much of that you saw. I hope you saw what you needed to. But what we're gonna do is change those seals now. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see me doing any of that though. So new seals are installed. Here's the old ones. So now basically you're just gonna get this up in place. Make sure that it goes in and it's level before you start to put the bolt in. I've seen it too many times where people will put the bolt in and they wind up crushing one end of that little manifold. Where the two lines come together, it's technically called a manifold. If I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me. I refer to it as a manifold. And like I said, I could swear that that is what it's called. So this, it's kind of tight up there. So getting on that with anything really substantial is not easy so I'm just getting that screwed down as far as I can Oops. and here again when you tighten this up you don't have to go bananas you're only going into aluminum So, there we go, that's tight enough. I could make it tighter if I wanted to, but that's good. Now we're gonna just connect electrical connectors. I don't think you can hook these up backwards or anything. Make sure I got this into place where it's gotta go. I'm sorry if my hand keeps going in the way. And then make sure you push that lock in place. All right, so finally, We got to get the belt on. I don't think I could do this with you watching me because I think it's too much in the way. Because I don't feel like taking this side cover off here because I could do it without taking the cover off. So there we go. We have the machine hooked up. It's vacuuming out right now. Manifold gauges. You can get these from Harbor Freight. They're not expensive. Uh, these are Harbor Freights, as a matter of fact. I want to say they are under 40 bucks. I don't recall, though. Don't quote me on that. But now, I've seen a lot of times where somebody... In their driveway, they, they do an AC repair. They'll replace a compressor, condenser, whatever, because it was leaking. So the system had nothing in it to begin with. And then when they're done, they'll go to the parts store and buy one of those R134 cans, you know, you charge it type of can, and then charge it up. And then wonder why the system never works right afterwards. You have to vacuum the system out. You put the system in a vacuum because it gets out all the air that's built up in there. 
and what happens is it gets out in the air. What's in the air? Moisture. It gets out moisture too. Moisture is the enemy of an AC system. So putting it into a vacuum like this for 20 minutes or so, that's, that's what you need to do. Because it'll pull the air out, it'll pull the moisture out. The longer it stays under vacuum, the more moisture it's going to pull out. Um, let's see, what else? Like I said, you can buy those manifold gauges. You can buy yourself a cheap scale too, 100 bucks or something like that. If you plan on doing some type of AC work, if you have to recover a system, get friendly with a body shop, get friendly with a repair shop that does AC system work. Let them recover it for you. Maybe they'll recharge it for you too. Um, you know, if you deal with them enough, you know, they'll cut you a break or whatever. Don't just open the lines and let it go out into the air. That's not good. That's not what you do. Um, but let's say you had a cat catastrophic failure and you got to put a compressor on it. If you're doing that, you got to flush the system too. A lot of people just throw a compressor on it and wonder how come they get a failure after a failure after a failure. It's because there's there's debris in the system that keeps getting eaten up by the compressor. Picture a compressor being an engine without an oil filter. And it's just pumping the junk around. It keeps pumping the junk around. Now, let's say you blow the motor in your car. Okay? And now you're going to reuse the oil pan that has junk in it. You're going to put a new motor in it, but you're going to reuse the old oil pan that has junk in it. Well, that's going to get circulated around the motor. Eventually, it's going to blow the motor again. And it's just a vicious cycle. It keeps happening. So, but you could buy a cheap scale for like 100 bucks. You can buy those manifold gauges for like, I, like I said, I think they're 40 bucks. But when you charge a system, after you vacuum it out, you can get a vacuum pump, I think, at, at Harbor Freight too. I'm not positive. I have one in my storage unit. I just, I don't remember where I got it from, to be totally honest with you. It might be a Harbor Freight. I just do not recall. I also have a scale. What you could do is, you know, you vacuum the system out for 20 minutes, a half hour, you take the R134 big bottle, they're not cheap. Keep it in mind, they're not cheap. You're gonna have to lay out, they used to be 150 bucks. They're now like 350 bucks. So for a while they were almost 600 bucks. So you're gonna have to lay out 300, 350 bucks. But if you do a lot of AC work, it's obviously worth it. Um, if you're using small cans, you don't have to really worry about a scale. You just go off of how many ounces in are, are in the can. But anyway, if you use a big scale, you flip the bottle upside down and you charge it that way. Um, you just go off of what the scale says. If you don't have a scale, you can go off pressure. You know, get, find yourself a pressure scale because pressures always depend on temperature too. You know, if it's 110 degrees out, your t pressures are going to be different than when it's 60 degrees out. Average rule of thumb is 30 psi on the low side, 175 on the high side, roughly. It varies, but it also varies on the vehicle. Um, so we're gonna let this thing suck down for a while, then I'm gonna recharge it, and then we're gonna see if the compressor works. Hopefully it works. It would suck if it didn't. <laughs> Things happen though, but it, it should work. I mean, it was lighting up the light bulb for crying out loud, so. But we'll find out. So we're vacuumed, we're charged, Cross our fingers, let's see if it actually works. Feels cool, but is it actually working? Yes, it is. You can see by the low side pressure and the high side pressure. See what I see? What I said around 30, around 175. Okay, so that's actually good. Can I see the compressor from here? Because before, yeah, if you look. Down here, you can actually see the compressor turning before it was not turning. Yeah, that's good. It's good repair. I'm happy with that. So, we just button this up, put the shields back on, and then we're good to go. All right, well, hopefully, you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.